Hi there, welcome to the iPhone 5 tutorial on object movement and manipulation. We're going to cover the basics of how to move, duplicate, align, and arrange all your on-screen objects. I'm going to import in a square here, and the first thing you'll see is the various pointy arrows pointing in different directions. This is called a gizmo, and it allows you to move your object in various directions like I'm doing here. If I want to undo my movement, I can press the Ctrl Z hotkey and my last action will be undone. Next is Rotate, which you can access with the E hotkey. You'll see the gizmo change, and now you can rotate your object along the X, Y, or Z axis just like movement. Next is the Scale tool, which I can activate with the R hotkey. Here I can stretch my prop in all directions, or uniformly expand it by using the yellow box in the middle of the gizmo. If I want to turn the gizmo off, I can use the Ctrl Q hotkey. Once I do that, the movement will automatically change to default X and Y axis movement. You can also hold down the Alt and Control keys and use your directional arrows to move your object. If I hold down Alt, I can use the directional arrow to move along the X and Y axis. If I hold down Control, then up and down will move along the Z axis, while left and right will rotate. In addition to that, you can also hold down the Shift key for quicker movement if your distance is larger. If you go to the settings at the top right of your application window, you will find a number of snap options, including Snap to Grid. When you select this, your movement will now snap according to the grid you have on your work window. The next snap setting is really useful for connecting objects. It's called Snap to Model. With this, I'll hold down the control key and drag my mouse to make another copy of my object. Now you can see that when I move this one closer to the other, it will snap in place to connect with the other object. This is really useful for building structures. The next snapping option is Snap to Angle. Here I've set mine at 45 degrees. This snap will only affect rotation. You can see that when I select and try to rotate my object, it will be a bit more jerky now, as it is snapping every 45 degrees of rotation. The Snap tool is really useful for doing things like building a wall as well. If I hold down the control key, I can make copies of this cube to build the base of a wall. Once I have that, I can multiple select the cubes at the base and use the same control drag function to make another level. If snap to model and grid are both selected, it's easy to position and build the wall exponentially. What I've done here is add a bunch of spheres around this same scene as well as the floor in order to demonstrate different selection techniques. I'll switch over to the Selection tool, or use the Q hotkey. You'll see here that I can drag a selection box from the top left, and as a result, everything touching the selection box will be selected, as you can see in the Scene Manager at the bottom left. I'll click away from the objects, deselect them, and then drag a selection box from the top right. Pay attention to which objects are fully surrounded by my selection box, because these are the only objects that will be selected. If I drag a selection box from the top right, then only the objects fully encompassed by your selection area will be selected, as opposed to when you drag from the top left, everything touching the selection box will become selected. If I select this single sphere here, and I want to focus the camera on that, I simply need to select it, and then press the G hotkey. This will give me a close overhead view, which I can then zoom out. The A, S, D, F, and other home row keys on your keyboard will do the same, giving you various viewing angles but focusing on the same object as you can see here. The K hotkey will give an overview of all the objects in the entire scene. For locating characters, the best hotkeys to know are F, J, and the home key. F will give you a front view of the character, while Home will give you a sort of overhead 45 degree view like this. If you want to quickly zoom into the face, just use the J hotkey. Notice now that when I rotate around, the camera will still focus on the selected object. However, if I deselect that object and continue the rotation, the camera will rotate around the center axis of the scene. Now if I have a huge scene full of objects, 
and I want to search for them, I can use the Shift F hotkey, or simply click the button above the scene manager. If I type in ball and press enter, you'll see all the objects in your scene manager with ball in their name will be selected. Now the spheres are selected, but I can zoom in on the scene by holding Alt and both mouse buttons, and moving back and forth. If I want to zoom even faster, I can hold down the Shift button, and the camera will zoom in quicker. Both of these techniques work for all types of camera movement. With all the spheres selected, I can move them all to the proper height here. Alternately, I can enter values in the Transform fields in the Modify panel to the right. Use the up and down arrows if you want to fine-tune your movement more specifically. Next, I'll demonstrate the Align tool. If you have multiple objects that you'd like to be in a row or lined up, then use this tool. Here I have boxes that are at random locations. First I need to select all boxes by holding the control key and double clicking on the other objects. Once they are all selected, the Align tool will become available at the top toolbar. When I select that and click the X, selected objects will align along the X plane. If I then select Y, they will all come together. If I want the spacing between objects to be consistent, I can select any of the planes under Uniform Spacing. I'll select the Y value and the blocks will change position slightly to become evenly spaced. The next tool is new to iClone 5 and it's called Multiple Duplicate. I'm just going to quickly scale this box down so that it forms a flat rectangle. Then I'll create a staircase using a few simple steps. Once I select the Multiple Duplicate tool, you'll see that a few other steps will appear next to my original on the X-plane. I want them to continue along the Y-plane instead, so what I'll do is enter in a 0 value for the X-move field and enter in 100 for the Y-field. You'll see the first three steps will then be duplicated on the Y-plane. I'll rotate the screen here to get a better angle, and then use the gizmo tool to bring the steps closer together. Notice the change in the Y value as I move along. I want some more stairs, so what I'll do is enter in 15 to the number of duplicates, and my staircase begins to take shape. If I rotate the screen and activate my gizmo again, I can use it to gradually increase the height of each new stair copy. I can rotate to the side to get a better view. I can then create a sort of spiral staircase by entering a value in the Z rotate field of about 10. Once I do that, you'll see the spiral staircase. I can then enter in a higher number if I want more stairs, and the pattern will continue. In addition, if I use the rotate tool, I can adjust the tightness of the stair rotation. You can also adjust the scale of each successive copy. If I put in 50 in the Y field, then each copy will be 50% thinner than the last one to create a sort of tower effect. You can change the values for different effects. If you want to create your own cool unique shapes, once you've created a tower shape like this, you can then use the rotate tool while the multiply panel is still open, and rotate the prop to create different kinds of cool shapes like this one here. Notice the rotation value in the Y field automatically changes. Lastly, I can adjust the space offset slider at the bottom to determine the ratio of space between each copy. Now I mentioned pivot points before, so here's an explanation for that. Your basic pivot will be in the middle bottom of your object, like this square here. I can change it to pivot in the complete center of the object by making sure middle is selected as the quick set, and then the center indicator is selected as well. That means rotating it will cause it just to rotate around the center axis, just like this here. This square has a default pivot point at the center bottom of the cube, as you can see here. If I go up to the Modify panel on the right and click the left middle pivot point, you'll see that the rotation will change to rotate around that left middle side. Just picture the side facing the bottom left as the front of the cube. The middle then represents the plane halfway through the cube, so when I move the rotation point to the upper left, that upper corner midway will become the pivot point. If I go up and change the quick set to the front of the cube, 
Now that face, that is brighter than all the rest, will represent the points in the Modify panel. If I select the top left point, you can see that the rotation pivots around the top front edge. If you want to set a custom pivot point, you can do that too. Rotating this pyramid on the z-axis will give it a tipping motion. But if for example I wanted more of a swinging motion, I can select Edit Pivot and then use my Move Gizmo to move the pivot point higher up on the object. Now notice the difference when I rotate along the z-axis. Lastly, I'll show you the Transform Reset tool. I'm stretching a sphere here using the Scale tool to make it into something like a pancake. If I fool around with the various dimensions, I can make a pretty basic UFO shape. Once I've done that, if I press the Reset button, it'll return to its normal shape. If you spent a little while making your object, then pressing Reset accidentally can be really annoying. I'm going to adjust the scale values here once again to make something like a surfboard shape. Once I have the shape that I want, I can go to the Modify panel and click the Reset Transform button. This will return all the values to default, but my shape will remain the same. You can then copy your prop, customize it with your own various patterns by dragging in your own image files, and saving it to your custom props folder. With proper object manipulation, you can create a lot of your own simple props by yourself. Try it out.